Hey everyone, I'm Laura. I'm Spencer, and we're Married with Board Games. When I was in college, I worked in a Christian bookstore, and I recall shelves full of, well, really bad Bible-themed board games. It was just a known fact that all board games based on Christianity were bad, and we should avoid them. So, when we were introduced to Commissioned, a cooperative game for two to six players from Kara Games, Let's just say we were unsure of how our experience was going to unfold. But we gave it multiple tries, and we have some thoughts to share. But first, let's head over to the table for a quick overview. Okay, so Commission, I'm going to start off by just showing you everything that comes with the game. You'll probably spread this out a little bit more when you start the game, um, but here, here it is. Here is everything. There are several different, there are actually six different apostles that you can play as. You can play as Paul, John, Peter, Andrew, James, and Barnabas. And they each have their own starting custom deck that um, down here it shows them what you can expect to find in their deck. Um, and it all has an ability that I'll explain here in a little bit, but Paul is not going to have the same cards as John uh, when you start the game, so keep that in mind. Each board also has a little bit of a backstory for the Apostle. It's got the order of play, and then um, over here we're going to be play, placing cards later on. It's got a place for your draw pile and your discard pile for your deck. I'll explain how all of that works together here in just a minute. There are several different scenarios that you can play. There are actually five, and they all have different goals, basically. So we'll go over those real quick. Here's Appeal to Caesar. There are different sides of the board, too, so it'll also tell you which board you start as. It has special setup instructions, special rules. You've got some victory conditions, and then tells you thematically what happens if you lose the game. For example, Paul's epistles are not collected into the New Testament. So if you don't accomplish this throughout history, then this never would have happened. We've also got first missionary journeys to the ends of the earth, Acts of the Apostles, and Peter's Gentile outreach. Again, they all have specific conditions to win. Um, so it makes each time you play with each different scenario feel just a little bit different. Essentially though, the main mechanism that you're trying to do is plant churches throughout the map. In order to have something considered a church, you have to have one of something in a location. So white cubes are church members, the gray meeples are missionaries, and then the, the colored pawns correspond with the apostles. You can move, um, and as long as you leave one of those in a location, you have a church there. So let's go through a turn sequence real quick and I'll just show you how this works. Again, this is a team game. So the first thing everybody does at the same time is arm. So you'll draw six cards from your deck. At the beginning of the game, you'll be starting with the six that are custom to your character. Next is the live step. Here you'll see that you'll go through this twice or three times if you have four to five players or four times if you have six players. Every time you go through the live phase, you're going to pass this, this uh, elder staff. So whoever gets this is the elder for the round, essentially the first player. First player is going to, it's going to take everybody through the live phase. So the first step of the live phase is to draw a trial card. Now this deck is customizable based on how difficult you want it to be. So you can put more difficult or easier cards into it based on how difficult you want the game to be. But you draw a card and then you um, apply its effects to where the current uh, elder is. So in this case you would either you would remove a church member or a missionary from where you're at and then you have persecution. So if there are multiple apostles in that location they all have to disperse across the map so they can't all be in the same location. They would have to move to an adjacent location. After the trial phase is the prey phase. The way that works is you will play for a two to three player game you will play two cards down but for a bigger than that, so if it's four or more, you only play one faith card down. So that's Prey. This is the card that you're offering for the Apostle, for the Elder to use for this round. In addition to that, the Elder will roll a die. And that number, that result, will correspond to a table to tell you if you can talk this round. Uh, so that's the message die. So if you roll a one, spies infiltrate, no talking during the share, move, and grow actions. Also, you have to remove a church member or missionary from the elder's church. So the only time that's a really good roll is if you roll a four to eight. 
uh, messages arrive, players may talk. So you have this chart that tells you, you know, sometimes you may be able to talk, sometimes you have worse effects, that kind of thing. Once you roll the die, you realize and you understand if you can talk or not, you're going to flip over your card, everybody will flip over their cards, and then the first player will choose cards to use, uh, two of them to be precise. They'll look around and find two cards that they want to apply. Your cards may do things like adding church members, or removing growth stops, or movement stops, or collecting books of the Bible that you need for one of your victory conditions. Basically, it's up to the lead player to decide which cards to use and how best to use them in the situation that you're in, and sometimes they have to do that without talking with everybody else. So it can be kind of a, a lot of pressure on that lead player. Once that lead player resolves those cards, then you'll move on to the move phase. You can do two move actions, and there are two, di two different types of movements. There's either fellowship or mission move. Now, in order to do a fellowship move, you can move as many as you want to another church. In order to do a mission move, though, only a missionary or apostle can do that, and they have to move from a location that has a population of four or more. So in this case, I can move to Beria over here and take some with me. Uh, and then I want to leave some there. But I can't do that if there are only, you know, another one there. I have to have at least a population of four before I can essentially come over here and plant another church. So those are the two different types of movements you can do. And then the final part of the live phase is to grow. What you'll do is you'll add one cube to a church with three or more total population. So for example, there I'd put one there, but nowhere else on the board. Sometimes trial effects will have you put growth stops out on the board. So what that does is it stops you from growing during that phase. Some effects may also tell you to put a mission move stop out on the board. And if that happens, you can't do the mission move from that location. So again, something else you have to deal with. Once you go through the live phase, the appropriate number of times, you'll move on to the mature phase. And this is where you're going to be able to buy cards to put into your deck. If you don't use the card for its ability, you can use it for its points. So however many cards you have left over that you didn't play, you can use that many points to purchase cards from these rows over here. Um, you're going to find different things in each pile. and you don't know specifically what you're going to get. But usually in the number two deck you're going to see uh, cards that can be used as the books of the Bible that you're trying to collect. But others will have abilities like remove grow stops, um, other special abilities like get out of jail, that kind of thing. Once you get through the arm, live, and mature phase, you'll start back over at arm and you'll go through this over and over again either until you run out of trial cards or you lose through your churches being extinguished or you win the conditions. If you ever have to remove a cube where there's already a church established, or any any piece for that matter. So for example, we had a church in Philippi, but we removed those. Essentially that church has been extinguished. So then you have to take one of these tokens and place it over here to show that that church has been extinguished. And you can only extinguish five churches, and if you do, you lose the game. Hopefully though, you'll be able to get the churches where you need them to be, you'll be able to deal with the trials as they come your way, and you'll be able to meet your goal and spread the gospel of the early church. All right, so let's get to talking about the game. All right, let's do it. All right, so first of all, let's start with the art and graphic design. Okay. Um, my thoughts are, it's just kind of meh. Well, yes. <laughs> um, it, it is very um, thematic. Yeah. It um, it makes me feel like I'm I'm part of the game. Mm -hmm. um, Semi immersive. Yeah. Uh, as far as like getting you into that mindset yeah. of like the different missions that you're trying to carry out and whatnot. However, some of it is a little hard to deduce. Yeah. We were having trouble most recently with. Um, Telling apart a couple of regions, the colors were very similar. Yeah. It may have been simply in our printing. Mm -hmm. However, those well, colors were just really close. Colors and, we couldn't and tell then the regions apart, which was it was important because I was playing as Paul and I had a special power that was for my region, the region mm -hmm. I was in. I couldn't tell if one of these islands was part of this region or not. Yeah, well, that and then sometimes the divisions. Are a little hard to decipher, especially in the darker regions, because they, they can. It's hard to see where those lines are drawn. So when you're trying to see where you're placing your church members and whatnot, sometimes you might accidentally put them in the wrong, wrong region. Um, I think the art, you know, 
it it almost feels like Sunday school pictures you'd see in a Sunday school classroom. And but in the back of the Bible, yeah, mm-hmm. or yeah, I like the colors of the board. I do. Um, it does feel like a map that you would see in the back of a Bible or something. But you're right; you've got some things on there. Um, well, and so, down in the bottom right corner, there's some unleavened bread, and it makes me crave bread so bad, especially because I sit on that side of the board, so it's like right there in front yeah, of me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, in this day and age where there's, like, some super awesome artwork you see in games these days, this doesn't really live up to that. But, you know, I don't feel like it, it distracts from our enjoyment of the game. No, not at all. No, but we just it, wanted it's, to... It seems typical. It seems like what I would have expected. Okay. I'll say that. All right. So it wasn't really groundbreaking or anything. Yeah. Nice nice uh, wooden cubes, nice meeples. I like the little elder staff thing. Well, yeah. That's fun. Well, and I'm thankful for the differentiation between... Um, the apostles, the missionaries, right. and the church members. Right, that's that's a good point too. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm glad, even not just the the pieces themselves, mm-hmm. but they the colors are all different as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on to the game itself. Okay. Um, let's talk about the complexity of the game as mm-hmm. far as just learning it, um, ease of understanding the concepts. How do you feel about that? Okay, well, um, there are several different scenarios to play. Mm-hmm. Um, the apostles went through a lot. Yeah. And um, I just feel like with each new one, you are constantly having to go back to the rule book. Okay. In order to make sure you're understanding everything. Um, there are so many cards. I mean, we've. I'm, we're still trying to get used to the trial cards. Yeah. And all the things that they do. And you know this is this is one of those games where, you know, repeated repeated plays. It's all going to sink in, and you won't True. have to do that. And I think that it is intuitive in that once you get those concepts and what the symbology means and all that, you won't have to do that after you know say, you know, seven six seven plays. Uh, but yeah, for your first two three, um, you're probably going to have to refer back to that. So because of that, there there could be some better player aids or reference card. I do appreciate on those player boards, there's a nice term structure. Uh, but There's something missing from them, though. What, what's missing? Rolling dice. Yeah, the rolling dice is missing from the that. The rolling to see about if our messages are being... Yeah. If they're being intercepted or if they mm-hmm. made it or if they're lost. You know, basically, if after praying before sharing mm-hmm. if we could talk or not yeah if we can discuss so if there was a, a card or reference card or something that kind of explains some of those concepts a little bit better just so you don't have to refer back to the rule back rule book that'd be a little bit better right because i mean even there were still several times that i i still get it confused about um, if you mission something, move oh yeah mission or move. fellowship move yeah. I, i'm still <laughs> trying <laughs> to make sure I get that right, because I don't want to mess it up. I just no. I don't want to get it wrong and cheat. Um, that, see, that's something for me that that did sink in. But you know, that's that shows the difference in an experience for other people that play the game too. So there there is that. But however, having said all of that, again, the complexity of the game isn't too too difficult. You just gotta you just gotta understand newer concepts, and it's not necessarily the concepts, but the terminology. Um, it's not traditional terminology because they're trying to make it thematic. Well, and because of that, because like you were saying about the complex or the um, the concepts, mm-hmm. um, mechanics wise and whatnot of understanding all those, mm-hmm. you have to know a lot of different mechanics. I feel like yes. So I like to think of this as almost like a Frankenstein game, but in a good way mm-hmm. because it's got several Frankenstein different... or Frankenstein's oh, monster. So Frankenstein the book. There, I covered myself. Okay. Um, because it's got a lot of different mechanisms. A little You've, bit of this over here, a little well, bit of that over and, here. And, you know, you can also almost explain it like uh, reverse pandemic because you're trying to spread out cubes mm-hmm. instead of trying to get rid of them. But, yeah, you've got some deck building. You've got some pick up and deliver. You've got some set collection. You've got some area control. Area, every area movement. Um so, but that's not a derogatory term when I say that it's a Frankenstein game because I like all of those, those mechanisms. True. But and it does help to be familiar with all of them. It does. But I feel like that they all mesh seamlessly. They did a, yeah, they did a very good job of piecing these things together because didn't, it didn't even dawn on me. Yes. Until you said that, I went, 
we are doing a lot of different things. Yeah, and and it might not, you know, I might be using some terms loosely, but when you really think about it, yeah, what you're doing is you're taking church members from one area and moving them to another area. Pick but you up have and to deliver. keep them back where they are. Yes, so you, you do. have to spread your influence. You yes. don't just move, move, move. Yeah. Pick up and deliver. You are spreading out. So you have to multiply them. And... There are some tough decisions when it comes down to on how to do that, and a lot of that comes down to. You just got to take a risk because you don't know what's going to come up in those trial cards. Oof. <laughs> yes, we've been so yeah. close. And then all of a sudden something happens that extinguished like a couple of churches yeah. or something. And that can be sad. <laughs> yeah. um, now, as far as winning the game, okay. I don't think it's too difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's just enough of a challenge to make the game intriguing. Mm -hmm. um, not one that's brutal um, like some no, other co-op no. games. But there are brutal moments <laughs> where it's oh like, my oh, gosh. I can't believe Our that just happened. very first game. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right off the bat, <laughs> we get slammed with, like, no mission growth and no yeah. church member growth. Right. Boom, boom. Right no where mission we And moves. no movement. Yeah, no, yeah. Yes. It was like, okay, well, yeah. then we can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. But there, it is challenging, especially, you know, I can see when you get up to those higher player counts... Um, be even more of a challenge, but you because you've got you know you've got more people doing different things, and um, but at the same time you have more people with different decks with different abilities that you're going to be able to choose from too. Right, but they also, um, I, I I would love to see it with a higher. We have full disclosure mm -hmm. only played just the two of us. I'm very curious about because when you play with more than mm -hmm. what we've been doing, you only choose one card for sharing. Right, and so. You know, there's, I, I do think there's a good balance there, though, mm -hmm. in my head, the way that that will work, because um, you'll only be playing one card down, and um, the elder will have this many to choose from, but then you'll have more in your hand later to yeah. use later to for mature. when you mature, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm, I'm interested to see how that will work. Yeah, um, but I like that maturing. I like that you've got, you know, in, in traditional deck building games you've got kind of like a platter of cards to choose from where you can s see specifically what they are oh yeah but in this one you don't know and so there's like oh i could take a chance and spend all of my points over here to hopefully get where i can spend and get more down here well i mean i, I think i've pretty much figured that part out of like well where the cards are yeah yes the ones that you need because mm -hmm. that's what i like is that there are several objectives that you need to do in order to finish this mm -hmm. this particular game, um, you need to get certain books of the Bible, mm -hmm. certain letters. Yeah, um, you need to get to a certain place. You need to have a certain size church. Yeah, um, you need to travel a certain way, following a, a, a specific path. Uh, different things like that. And yeah. You need to play a specific card, like. Um, convert city leaders or, right. or whatnot of different things like that that i like that it's it's not so cut and dry that there are several things you need to do well with i that. mean and that brings us to our next point there there is lots of variety with this game you've got those different scenarios yes. that are going to have different types of setup you've got uh, different objectives um you've got two a double-sided board you've got different Characters with different abilities. Right. Well, I mean, not abilities, but different specialties types of deck. Yeah. as far as their deck. What what kind of cards they will be bringing yeah. to your deck? Yeah. So lots of variety in this in this game, and I, I think that that really adds to the replayability aspect of the game too. I don't think you're going to get bored bored with this one right. very easily. Um, another thing that I really appreciate about the game is the investment in the thematic connection with everything that you're doing in the game. Yeah. Yeah. I, def I definitely appreciate the designer's work into on the cards. Not all of them, but a good chunk of them. A good chunk of them? There is scripture reference. reference. Yes. yes. There's a giant theme index that explains what's going on at this time in the early church mm -hmm. and the historical aspect of, of why the certain... Uh, scenarios, what you're doing in certain er scenarios, and where you can find more information about that in the Bible and what's going on. Well, in the way that they took these different things that like we've grown up learning in mm -hmm. church and made them applicable to a yeah. game, like we pulled a card in um, persecution, yeah. and so everybody has to leave this area and flee, except for one person stays yeah. in the city, or, or different things like that are being thrown in jail. Yeah, uh, Paul and Silas. But then I also I had a card. 
that was um, Angelic Escape, which is basically <laughs> yeah. a get out of jail free card. But that is a story in the Bible where Paul and Sil Silas were singing and, and the jail shook and the doors all flew yeah. open and, and things like that. The, the attention to detail in what you're doing in conjunction with the, the stories from, from Scripture is just... It's it's phenomenal. It really <laughs> yes. is. And it, it is. And if you're if you're looking for a game that is a game that is an awesome hobby gaming, but also means something with that regard, this is it. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know if it could have been done any better than that. Right. Um, um, I even love on your player board, you've got the backstory or just a little tidbit about your your apostle right. as well. And, yeah. And, in their life. And yep. So really major neat. kudos there. Yes. Time to play. How do you feel? Do you feel like the game drags on? Do you think it's just right? Too short? What do you think? Um, I, th I think it's just right just yeah. because there is a lot to get done to complete some of these tasks mm -hmm. and you have to dig through the decks to find them. So yeah, it, they can do well, a little bit. And, and I also think that your game's not going to drag on. It's not going to go longer with more players because you've got that set amount of rounds in the trial deck. Like once that trial deck runs out, you're done, regardless of what's happening. Um, you know, if all of your churches get extinguished, that's another way to lose. Or, you know, the certain amount of churches that get extinguished, that's another way to lose. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's about an hour Every time we play, whether we reach the objective or not, um, <laughs> it's it's going to happen. And so, and I think that that's enough time with those trial cards to get your objective complete. Mm -hmm. it may come down to the wire. Like our most recent play, we had maybe one or two left before we won, so it was really nerve wracking. But we did it, and we needed to get two different letters yeah. or, or two parts of the Bible and we got them in one play. Yeah. So it was, you know, it does provide that feeling of, oh, are we going to make it? Are we going to make it? And we did. So thank goodness for the early church. Am I right? Um, but, you said it. <laughs> but uh, I think that, um, you know, it, it works better. I mean, like you said, we've only played it two player, which it, it's a great two player game. I think it works just fine. My, my instinct says it works better at a lower player count because you don't have to sit around. But I mean, you do have that element of everybody's involved the whole entire time because everybody's playing a card every round. So maybe it does work at all player counts. I don't know, that's something we'd like to explore, play with more people. But just from our judgment of playing two player, it works and it's it's a fun game. I, I agree definitely with that. Yeah. And so bottom line from us is Commissioned is a fun, well-designed cooperative game that just happens to be biblically themed too. Commissioned rises above those bad Bible themed games and really stands apart from them. And setting that aside, as a hobby board game, it's a great game too. There are many familiar mechanisms that work together seamlessly to create a truly enjoyable cooperative experience and everything that happens in the game feels very thematic. It is lacking in the graphic design and production value department, but if you can get past that, you'll find a well-designed game here. Having said all of that, we have give Commissioned a rating of 7 and a seal of approval. Kara Games has proven that biblically themed games can be good. We're going to box this one up for now. Check out more of our reviews and the reviews of other awesome contributors right here on the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.